<laughs> Welcome to a wee bit of alchemy. Um, and uh, <laughs> just a wee bit. Yeah. Um, so uh, this week, I, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about attitude and uh, the way that attitude uh, is formed and and what, what it actually, you know, what, what makes an attitude. And the way we, uh, it's commonly used is like, it's a subtle way of thinking or feeling. It's, uh, and, but it comes from, its root is in an Italian word, uh, which means posture or fitness. So the, you know, where this came up was a friend of mine was asking for, you know, three things you could do to change your attitude. And, uh, and so it caused me to take a look at it because it's, it's, it's something that people oftentimes get stuck in a way, a certain way of being in, in, in their lives. You know, I'm just an angry person or I'm really depressed or whatever. And this affects their, their outlook on life and it affects in how they're able to function in, in, in the world. And um, so when we look at the root of that, it has a, uh, a physical uh, relationship. And um, I like that because it kind of tied in with a lot of what we're doing. That is that the way you stand, the way you move, the way you hold your body affects your energy flow and your energy is going, has a direct effect on your, your mood, your health, your, yeah, your, your happiness. And um, so if your energy is collapsed, there is a tendency toward uh, your emotions to be collapsed as well, to move toward depression or contraction. And that if we expand and open up the energy, we get more of it moving through and moving through in a, um, in a way which is not impeded by extraneous muscular tension, then we have the, the, the makings of, of, uh, of health and happiness. In uh, Chinese medicine, the uh, you, you boil it down to its essentials, and it's, it's have lots of chi and circulate it well, and that's you know that is the secret of 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 health, happiness, and a long life. And of course, there are a million and one things you can do to facilitate that, but that is what it boils down to. And if we can incorporate that into not just something that we do as a treatment but it's something, the way we live our lives, it's going to greatly affect our attitude, how we, how we look at life, how we, you know, what emotions we embrace, what emotions we identify with, what thoughts we identify with. So, um, the, um, William Blake said, energy is eternal delight. And I, I, I like that one. It's a, uh, you know, it, it kind of gets to, gets to the root of it for me, that if you have a, an abundance of chi and you circulate it well, you, you have much better chance of feeling kind of happy in your life. So, uh, the, uh, so what I wrote back to my friend was, you know, basically the three pillars. That is, we want to get coherent, we want to get central equilibrium, and we want to unkink the hose. So if we do that, then we um, we stand a much better chance of of of, of having a, a positive attitude. I'm just going to adjust this, this monitor here a little bit. Excuse me, everybody. Just kind of move this over just a wee bit there. That's it. Because I felt I was not connecting. There we go. That's better. Good. So. Uh, the uh, 
emphasis tonight I'd like to, uh, to focus on is the is unkinking the hose part. So that is once we plug into the big chi, once we get, once we align ourselves with the, uh, with the energies of, of heaven and earth, then we got more energy going through. But if we are kinking the hose, we're only claiming a very tiny part of that. So and the three basic parts, three basic places that we, we tend to kink most are in the hip joints, the qua, the neck at the jade pillow gate, and in the shoulders. And so, and by activating the, the elbow gate, we, we tend to unkink the hose in the shoulders. So I like to, to go over each of those and I kind of fine tune it a little bit because a lot of what I've been talking about recently has been sort of a shotgun approach and getting so that um, talking about it in, in a way that is, is kind of broad, but in working with uh, a lot of my students in person, I'm noticing that that even after working with me for years, there are there are there's a fine tuning that occurs that really changes the the quality of the energy and also the amount of of chi that's flowing through. So the uh, uh, starting with uh, starting with the qua, let's uh, if you stand up. So if we just review the qua is this area right here. It's where your torso meets your legs. And uh, what's, uh, what's clicking there? I'll check it, don't worry about it. Okay, so, so the, where the torso meets the legs. So I, unfortunately I'm all in black today, so maybe it's a little harder to distinguish, but you can see my hand there. And I, right at that inguinal crease, so if I, spiral down, I'm kind of folding into, into that, into the inguinal crease. And then if I turn the other way, I'm opening up, I'm separating the, the leg from the, from the torso. Um, so we're going to start just with the, with the weight in the, in the right leg. And notice that the knee is pointing straight forward. So if your if your foot is turned out like that and your knee is going out that way, you're going to create some some knee tension. Just try that and feel that. Just feel the the knee tension. If your weight is on the outside of your foot, you're going to feel tension there as well. But bring it back so that it's pointing straight ahead and your knee is lined up with the ball of the foot. You really want to feel that, feel the, the weight going straight down into the ball of the foot and pick up the back heel. And this is one way of, of, of isolating it. And as the movements get more complicated, then, then you have to make adjustments. But this, this allows you to establish what that really feels like to be, to be in there, to get that alignment. So we have the ball of the foot, we set the knee, and then the qua releases and spirals down. So the notice you put your hand here on your thigh and you're spiraling down, your, your body is turning to the right, but the knee and the leg are still pointing straight ahead. And then you go back to center. So you spiral down to the right and notice that you're moving away from, from that line, that line where the uh, your, your hip is spiraling down, but what's not happening is you're not pushing the butt back to do it. You're spiraling down and notice that the butt stays right where, right, right here, right? So there's no lateral movement at all with your quad. So the knee alignment and the quad, the releasing of the quad are very closely related. It's very difficult if you're, if you're not releasing the qua and you turn your body, it's hard to keep your, your knee set because it wants to pull the knee away. One way to, to practice this 
would be to, to grab a chair and uh, or something and just something where you that uh, you can press against so that as you're spiraling down, notice that the knee doesn't move. Okay, my body stays upright and the knee doesn't move. When I go to the other way, I, go, I turn to the left, I still set my knee and I spiral down to the left, releasing down and turning this way. So my, my body and uh, the front of my body is pointing over there, but my knee is pointing over there. So I get this, I release that and open that. Now, as you're, you're first learning how to do this, you may only be able to open it this far. It's, that's okay. It's more important, the fact of opening, the fact of releasing, this fact of spiraling down, of getting sung is much more important than how much you do. Spiral down to the right, to do it very slowly. So we're spiraling down to the right and really sinking into that, that quad and feeling what that feels like to release there. Because your body is going to, if you haven't done this a lot, it, it's going to react. It's going to say, no, no, that doesn't feel right. That feels like it's work. Let's not do that. So you go back and you do it again. And each time you do this, it becomes a little more acclimated to the idea that, oh, we have this whole set of muscles here that we don't use very often. Spiral down to the left and open that. And notice how this leg is just kind of moving along for the ride. It's, it has no weight in it, so it gets to, it, it just turns with my body. But there's a, a releasing down. You're kind of sitting down into the quad as you do that. Let's go to the left leg. And you know, go this way. So you feel the, feel the knee, set the knee and spiral down to the left. Now, as you do this, one of the things you want to really feel is the ball of the foot. You're not leaving there. You're not rolling to the outside of your foot as you do it. You're not rolling back into your heel. You're not moving back into your other leg. You are just spiraling down, turning your body. So my body is facing that way. My knee is facing that way. My knee's going straight toward you. My body turns over that way. Spiral down to the left and just hang there a moment and just feel into that. You just get that set and feel into your hands, feel into your arms and notice the energetic connection that you are creating by doing this. And back to center. Good, spiral down to the right. Knee still pointing that way, my body turning that way. You, if you point straight down, bring it to the outside of your leg, you point straight down, you want to point to the outside of your foot. If my butt's sticking out at all, you'll notice that the point, uh, that my fingers point to a spot that's inches to the wide of my foot. I want to keep it set there. So don't worry about how far you're doing it. It's you want to really just get the fact of, of releasing. You sprout down to the right now and release down into that. And just, ah, just feel into that. Feel yourself sitting down into your left claw. You want to feel it over the ball of the foot. Now, let me just explain for a moment about when I say feel it in the ball of the foot. The weight is actually distributed throughout the whole foot. All right? Just be clear about that. The weight is distributed throughout the whole foot, but the ball of the foot is the bullseye on the target. That's the orientation point. You feel that, and so you wanna hug that, that spot there, even though you'll feel some of the weight in your heel, some of the weight on the outside of your foot, but the focus is right there in the ball of the foot. And by the ball of the foot, I am referring to this point right here on the big toe line, right there. You want to feel that, that big knobby thing. 
and you want to have that as your, your focus point. Um, once you go to the back leg now, and feel into the ball of the foot there, set the knee. And this time we're gonna spiral down to the right. So we're releasing down, we're spiraling down, we're kind of screwing into the earth. You're not forcing the hip joint, you're letting it go. And then you go back to center, and spiral down to the right. Just feel yourself sitting down. And back to center. Good. And spiral down to the left. My knee is pointing that way. My body is pointing that way. And back to center. And spiral down to the left. And all the while I'm reaching with the knee wand, reaching with that crown point. Feel yourself relaxing into the, into the, into the quad and back to center. Good. Put your left foot back and let's do the, that one too. Now spiraling down to the left, releasing down and back to center. Every time we do this, you're gonna pick up something new. And I'm still learning. I've been doing this for decades and I'm still learning. And just kind of play with that. Just kind of spiral down, come out, spiral down a little bit more. Just get the feeling of that. And then, ah, then spiral down to the right. And back to center. And spiral down to the right and really just release down. And the more you do this, the more acclimated your body gets to it. It starts to say, oh, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's righteous. Let's do that. And yeah, back to center. Good. And then bring your feet parallel and just hang out there for a second. Go to a neutral posture. And feel the balls of your feet. And reach with the knee one and just moving that central equilibrium. Are you feeling your, that sweet spot? You're allowing the, yourself to plug into the big chi. Yeah, all right, so grab a seat. Let's discuss that. Uh. Did uh, any questions on that or any any clarifications that needed for what we're talking about there? Valerie, you're on mute. Va you're on mute, Valerie. Okay, you mentioned this just briefly, and I can definitely feel the difference. The jutting butt. Um, JDS, as it's known as. Right. Um, <laughs> That's the scientific can, name for it. Yes, I know. Jut, jutting butt syndrome. Um, so I can tell when I turn, you know, when the, the, that, the, uh, that the claw relaxes, okay? And if the butt is jutting, that it doesn't do that. Great. But what, but what if I'm not paying close attention? Is there something besides pointing down or just being aware? Is there something like you've got the, the chair for the knee? Is there another little tool? Oh, for, for the JBS. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sure. I mean, you can use a similar kind of, similar kind of deal. You know, get, uh, you know, do a, do a, a thing with the chair for that as well, right? Bring your, you're here like this and you spiral down, right? Notice the chair doesn't go anywhere. Right? So I'm in my back leg, same kind of deal. I spiral down. Oh, no, this, this leg, okay, here we go. So I'm here like this 
I spiral down, the, the chair stays put. So that's, that's a, uh, a training device that will give you a perspective on what it feels like to keep that tight, that tight spiral going down. And uh, when you do that enough, you get an internal sense of what that feels like to the point where you say, well, why would I do anything else? Why would I, why would I not be Sun Kwa when I do this? Because it feels so, so good. Again, we're, we're, allow, we're unkinking the hose there and allowing that, that chi to flow through us, which is constantly renewing our energy, which is, uh, is a good thing. That's good, thank you. You're welcome. Well, one thing that uh, one thing that you might notice if your butt is sticking out, chances are your weight is rolling over to the outside of your foot. So if you're feeling more weight on the outside of your foot, chances are your butt's out. Yes. Good. Anybody else? Okay. That that felt good. Felt uh, felt righteous. But good. So it's one of those things you, you, you're going to have to play with for years and years to really, and, and, but the beautiful thing is every time you do it, it, it's a renewable resource. It gives, gives back, it gives back way more than you invest in it. So uh, we like that. Okay. So the, uh, the next uh, major kink in the hose is right here at the back of the head. The at the base at the base of the skull. Jade pillow gate. The jade pillow gate. So that little indentation there, and uh, so the tendency is to that to get tight, particularly under when we're under stress. Also due to our posture, so that the chin will come up and out, and we'll kink the hose back there, and. Uh, the effect is to immediately collapse the energy field. And uh, I've demonstrated this many times, but it's, it's, it's like flipping off a, a switch whenever you kink the hose there. You, you ask someone to lift their, their, their chin and immediately the, uh, the whole body becomes weaker. So, but if you go the opposite direction, and you tuck in the chin, you raise the, the crown, of the head, um, then something good happens. You open up that the spirit of vitality, the Jing Shen, uh, comes through, and this is what allows us to access the uh, the spiritual force that Cheng Man Ching talked about. So, whenever just by doing that, you immediately crank up your chi quite a bit. Uh, but more than that, your jin, your ability to, to organize your energy and express it through your body. So the, uh, the, it, this, you know, they call it the jing chen, the spirit of vitality, because allowing that energy to move through there unites the whole body mind and creates this, this unified uh, field and a unified structure that is much stronger, much more powerful, much more uh, efficient than it would be otherwise. Um, and the reason why I, I go on about this is because there is a lot of what I would consider misinformation out about that. And I'm running into some, someone who's quoting me something just a couple of days ago where they show you know, they had a diagram of the correct posture which was that your your weight was over the arches of your feet you reached up with the top of your head and they specifically said do not reach up with the crown you know do not have the crown very high and and you have your weight over the balls of your uh, of the arches of your feet and this was considered to be the correct posture. And everybody should just try that. Just go put the weight in the arches of your feet 
and reach up with the, the top of your head, not the, not the crown, and just feel what that feels like in terms of your, your connection with the, with the earth. Now, just bring your, your body forward so you're feeling it pressing down on the balls of your feet, and then reach up with the crown point, tuck in your chin a little bit, and notice the effect that that has immediately as you get into that posture. Notice the change in your energy immediately. And then go back to the arch of your, arches of your feet, reach up with the top of your head, and notice how you're back to floating again. You go back to the balls of your feet, reach, and you're rooted. And so we have that, that, that connection there. So getting the, uh, the jade pillow gate opened unkinks the hose there, allows the, for more flow of cerebral spinal fluid, which uh, is considered in, in cranial safety, it's considered to be the essential element, the primary thing that precedes all the other stuff is that cerebral spinal fluid. It's what bathes the, the brain and the, uh, the spinal cord, and it also appears in every cell. There's some little piece of cerebral spinal fluid appears in every cell. And it's what allows us to communicate at a um, uh, kind of wirelessly throughout the whole body. So whenever that is flowing freely, then we have much a much uh, more coherent system. And also by by opening up the jade pillow gate, you're un you're you're decompressing on the medulla oblongata, which is the part of your brain which controls your your breathing, your your heart rate, and a bunch of other things, your digestion. So a lot of the stuff. Is uh, is directly controlled by the medulla oblongata, and if you're if you're kinking the hose there, you're putting pressure on that. So there's a there's a lot of stuff on that, and then plus it gets into you know esoteric traditions where they consider that to be a, a chakra and uh, you know a major source of uh, of uh, juju. Beatrice. Oh, that's, that's the difference is shocking. That's all I want to say. The difference oh, between the difference is shocking. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> like you know, one one you space out and your body float away, and the other you're like suddenly in the room, completely present and embodied. It's really it's like day and night. Thanks. Beautiful, beautiful. So that you know, going back to attitude, you know, if I'm like this, so I'm kind of schlumpy, collapsed energy energy field that affects my attitude. If I'm yep, you know, reaching, opening up, that's a different attitude. I'm a different person whenever I am in central equilibrium. And that affects, you know, your every aspect of your life, including your relationships with other, other human beings. Cool. Okay, and uh, <laughs> um, any questions on that? Any thoughts on that? Any uh, Everybody good on, 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 on that, Jade Pillowgate, good? All right, then the, uh, the other one, you know, we've talked a lot about that recently, but the shoulders, I'm gonna keep beating on that drum because this one goes way back and there's a whole lot of misinformation about shoulders too. And, uh, you know, every one of us I'm sure has had the, uh, had the pleasure of having a teacher tell us to relax our shoulders and, and then again, and then again, and then again. And, um, and somehow they just kept coming, you know, kept getting that. And that's because we have that old pattern. It's something that is, you know, that goes way back to, you know, your infancy, that you, you're moving from that before you get control of your, the rest of your arm. So we initiate from the shoulders, we tend to tight, tighten up, and that blocks the chi. So that's a major kink in the hose. And if we go to, we are initiating motion and we initiate it first by tensing the shoulder, lifting the shoulder, 
And even if we're reaching out and we're pushing out from the shoulder, we are weaker. So what do we do for that? We reach with the elbows. We open the elbow gate. And it doesn't have to be even very elaborate. It doesn't have to be very big. You just, you hear like that and you just took just, just that little, little bit and bingo. Something happens. Something rather dramatic happens. A few weeks ago, we talked about, you know, the Superman posture. You stand like this, and this is a very strong attitude, right? We're, da, 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 and uh, you're, that's a very strong attitude, and one that we may not want to assume that degree of intensity all the time. But if I'm just like this, and I'm like that, I just reach out my elbows a little bit. I get the same juice without the, the ostentation of, a, uh, of the other. It just, ah, I just reach out. And if I do that, I immediately unlock my shoulder. And so we've done a lot of work with that recently where you set the elbow first and then you move the arm and it creates a graceful motion with the arm. So in terms of affecting your attitude, by getting these three, turning out these three kinks, you are getting more chi and more coherence within the whole system, which affects your vitality, it affects your energy flow, it affects your, re reflects your presence, and your, your willingness to occupy space and time. So your power, your soft power comes immediately, is amplified immediately by that uh, opening those, those, those kinks in the hose. Okay, any thoughts on this? Any questions? Everybody good on that? Okay. Beatrice. Just another yeah. quick, another quick uh, observation. It's just that um, I feel like that little that little extension of the elbows is actually more powerful than the, than, than the Superman pose. Like it actually feels much more um, maybe because it's more grounded. It just feels very, very like I can't explain it. It feels stronger and I I agree. I agree. It uh, you know just 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 doing that. It's it's such a a quiet expression of power and and that in and of itself is is uh, strong and uh, uh, also in keeping with a, with a Tai Chi perspective that uh, idea of an understated expression of power. Valerie. Well just watching you do it you know versus the Superman just you know extending the elbows out just that tiny bit you you your whole demeanor changed dramatically you are all of a sudden paying, like paying attention. I'm paying attention. And it just was obvious. You became much more powerful without quite that attitude, right? right. Like, oh, hmm. Which, uh, you know, I think that that's really great. And I, I expressed this to you a couple of days ago when we were talking that when I stand in central equilibrium, and you know, I'm even pointing and then just add a little bit of the elbows. I mean, the energy that then comes shooting out of my fingers is just a thousand times more. Uh, and I, I, I feel like I've just taken a drug of some sort. <laughs> just everything changes just like that. And it happens every single time, even driving a car. Okay, yeah. I'll be pointing and then just add the elbows and all of a sudden I'm just filling the entire car out beyond the car and nice. I feel, uh, let's say, more protected. Nice. It's, it's very cool. Beautiful, beautiful. It, it seems to me the Superman pose, when you put your hands on your hips, it locks your shoulders up. Whereas when you get your elbows... It doesn't have to. If you reach with your elbows, it, it doesn't have to. But, but yeah. it, it definitely is a, 
it, it's, it's more out there. It's, yeah, it's, it's more of an out there kind of posture. And, uh, what's that? When your elbow, it's just your elbow, feeling with your elbows, you're free floating. When you put your hands on your hips, it brings you, for me, it brings my shoulders back into it. Uh, okay, I understand. If you reach with the, rather than press in, you just reach out with the elbows, you, and uh, out and down with the elbows, you can, what you do is you're creating space in the shoulder joint. Right. Right? And so the, uh, if, you, if you do that, you create space. I mean, just do it just sitting here, just reach out and create, reach out with your elbow and create space with the with that and notice that immediately you fill up so it's uh it's it's kind of cool it's a such a a wonderful hidden resource that yeah affects the the how much chi you got available for you so and um um going back to attitude by having that firm foundation in structure that allows the energy to flow much more robustly, even if softly, then gives you a foundation with which to engage the world, to engage life. So you're, you create a base state, a, f a foundation that enables you to reach out and and encounter life with more confidence, more certainty, more presence, more ease, and that affects your attitude. Your attitude goes from being nervous about the next moment, anxious about life, to ah, I got this. Yeah, I got this. So you you get that confidence there that that changes your attitude. And uh, learning to do this as a, you know, just part of your, your daily existence. You do it, you know, every chance you get, you know, you gradually reshape your body to accommodate this new energy and this new perspective. You know, part of the, uh, I think what we find off-putting about Superman posture is that it's, it's kind of forcing itself on the world. And, uh, you know, whereas if you just reach out with your elbows and you, you're just being, you're, a, you're just abiding, then there is a, uh, it allows for other things to happen around you and you don't, you're not enforcing yourself upon it. So you can shift to that if you want, but the other, but uh, you don't, you don't have to go there. Uh, Valerie. Um, okay. So you've, you've done that. Like I was sitting in the doctor's office the other day and, uh, you know, I, you know, engaged my elbows. I was pointing my fingers and I felt that and then started engaging in conversation. How, what is the effects of that? I, of, you know, I've got this juice flowing and I can't be static in my posture the whole time just you know the elbows out and pointing the fingers so i feel that but then i'm engaged in a different way how it's like does uh, do you understand what i'm trying to say what are the how long are the effects of that before it's like okay be aware of my shoulders or my elbows again um is that making any kind of sense yeah you're saying it uh, you know what's the carryover you, yes. when you do that. And uh, what I'm suggesting is that it becomes part of who you are so that it's not just something you do, it's just, you know, something, something that you are. And we do, we, we start by, you know, feeling it in a static posture and then we start moving it into movement. And this is where we introduce it into Tai Chi and Qigong and things like that. So we're, we're doing it then. And then we say, oh, it worked there. How about uh, whenever I'm shopping or, <laughs> you know, walking down the street or whatever. And then, oh, that, that, that felt good. How about this other thing? And then you just, you just start adding it into different parts of your life and it becomes part of your, your nature. 
at that point. That, that is who you are. You are this expansive, robust, vital, enthusiastic human being engaging life with, you know, your whole being. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it, so let's do it now as a, uh, let's part of, uh, you have something, Beatrice? Yeah, I'm just wondering about the metaphor of containment. That's what came to mind of the difference between super, Superman and the just the, the more understated, you know, extend, extended, extended elbows. That it feels like with the elbows extended and the knee one lifted, it feels like it's a lot of power, but it's kind of contained. And there's the whole integrity feeling versus Superman thing is more. It's just wilder and so the other one feels more powerful because it feels more grounded to me i don't i don't know if that's a if that metaphor makes any sense to you and and the only reason i bring up the superman one is because there is scientific research related to that showing that and this goes back to our conversation of the last couple of weeks that you can change your your actual biochemical state your neurochemistry by going into that posture for two minutes so wow. two minutes of that and you increase your, your uh, uh, testosterone, which gives you uh, uh, more ability to do and it increase your, your health, your robustness, and it, uh, it decreases cortisol. Just two minutes of that and it changes your presence. There's all these factors that, that get get created by by just you know two minutes of that of that posture which i think is fantastic yeah. but we can take that information and make it into something which is a little more useful to us yeah. and uh and so it's something we can include to it in and all kinds of stuff so let's uh let's do a uh Let's do a cloud hands, okay? So there are lots of ways to do cloud hands, but we're going to uh, um, here we go. So we're going to begin just by feeling the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and spiral down and using the left quad, we're spiraling down to the left. And as we do that, the right hand comes up and out to the side. Okay, so you're feeling about 80% of your weight in your right leg and you're, you're reaching out. So turning this way, you can see I'm not reaching out that way, I'm just reaching this way. So. I'm spiraling down into my left quad and reaching out there. So I do that, spiral down like this. Good. Now I feel the ball of my right foot. I set my right knee. And now I'm going to use my right quad and I'm going to spiral down to the right. And as I do that, the right hand comes across in front of my face. My left hand comes across under my navel, I turn and the left hand circles up, my right hand comes down, and now I'm turning to the right. Okay, reaching out with both hands, reaching out my elbows, opening the shoulder joint. I'm also reaching up with my knee wand, opening up the jade pillow gate. So here I am getting all three of those, those, those things together. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the right, pick up the left heel and step out just a little bit with the left foot. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, and then turn to the left. The right hand comes down, the left hand comes across. And, oh, I'm turning, reaching over to my left side now. My weight is about 80% of my left leg. Notice how what I didn't do was I didn't rock over like this. My butt 
stays well inside my inside my foot. I'm reaching out there and I pick up my right heel and step in a little bit of my right foot. Good. Now I feel my right, the ball of my right foot. I set my right knee and oh, I'm spiraling down to the right now. Right hand comes across, left hand comes under and oh, reaching. Again, notice my body tight turning circle, reaching out, reaching out with the elbows, reaching out with the fingers, re reaching up with my knee one. So there's a sense of expansion throughout the whole structure. Pick up the left heel and step out. And then feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and turn to the left now. Right hand down, left hand across. Okay, feel the ball. So, and then step in with the right foot. Good, feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee and turn to the right, back to center and close. And just feel the chi in your hands. We just did that for a minute, but it's, uh, there, there's a, uh, a robustness in the, in the field now. Reach with your elbows, reach with your knee one, feel your, the balls of your feet. Good, release your, your quad, allow yourself to sink down into your legs and just allow that energy to move. Good. Okay, so uh, um, Scott asked for uh, a, a clarification on the uh, rolling down posture in, in the in the reclaiming lost territory exercises, and so the what I'm trying to do I'll speed it up really quickly is I start with my body vertical and then I release one vertebra at a time. So this is a speeded up version. So you're, you're, notice that my body is staying vertical. I'm stacking up my vertebrae, even as I'm letting go of my spine one at a time. So my, my spine stays vertical, even though I'm going down. And so I'm focusing on letting go one at a time, but keeping the support under here, even though it's relaxed, it's still supporting it. And learning to control that helps to keep your hands on your legs as you go down. So you're keeping this tight. You're not reaching out here. You're keeping this tight. Keep the weight over the balls of the feet. The knees are bent. You're reaching out with your, your coccyx, reaching out with your crown point, and you're still keeping this. So as you do this, you're creating more space in your, in your vertebrae. You're opening that up, and you get down to, down to here, and you're pretty well release in your back, then you straighten your knees, and then you continue to drop. And you use your breath to continue to drop as you do that. And each, you do like, you know, four or five breaths, and then, and then you bring your knees underneath. Yeah. And then you come back up, establishing your vertebrae one at a time, coming up, 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 and getting to that, that whole thing. Good. So, uh, how'd that, uh, any questions on that? That has to answer the question for you, Scott? Good, good. Everybody else got that? Okay. I think it's a it's a killer exercise. It's it it really just 
you know, creates this suppleness. And then if we add to it, the go the opposite direction, we uh, open up this way. Uh, then we, we create space in the anterior part of the spine. And you're also opening up this, the shoulders and the chest as well. Okay, any, any questions on that? Any thoughts on that? Okay, anybody? All good, all good? Scott. Yeah, um, okay, so my confusion was when you said keep your back straight, I think what, what you kind of, it seems like what you're saying is keep your lower back straight, right? Keep the, that's what keep, keep the spine straight underneath the ones you're relaxing. As you keep it straight and then release it one at a time. So you're going, da, 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 da. But you're, you're keeping it support, the support steady underneath it. Got it. Yeah, good. Good. All right. So uh, I think we have time for Maria to do her, uh, her thing. Uh, Beatrice, did you want that still? Yeah, only if she wants to. I mean, no, no pressure. Uh, well, if we, if it, let's say anybody has any other business. I think. Uh, no, uh, do that, do that. Do, do that, that do that thing. Okay, yeah. so I, I present to you the lovely and talented Maria Barrett. Take it. Can't do I have to crawl out under the light. <laughs> okay, so this is just a um, hold and breathe, right? So we start off. Relax into your chair. And then the first point is right where the eyebrows start, the start of the eyebrows. So just take your fingers and gently press in and hold that point and take two breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth. And feel the point with your fingers and feel your fingers from the inside point on your head. And the next point is at the other end of the eyebrow, right where the eyebrow ends. Feel that point with your fingers and feel from the inside, feel your fingers from inside your head. And two breaths. Next point is on the cheekbone, stomach two or three, whatever it is, on the cheekbone, right underneath where your pupil is. Press in and feel that bone, feel that point with your fingers and feel from the inside of your face, feel your fingers at those two points and two breaths. Next point is right in the, under your nose, the top lip. Feel that with your finger. It's the end of the governing meridian. And feel your finger with your upper lip. Two breaths. Next point is in the cleft of your chin. Press in gently with your finger. Feel that point with your finger and feel your finger through that point. You see this is the end point of central meridian. Next points are the K27s. Find the knob where your collarbone is and just go in. You feel a soft spot and press and hold and feel that spot with your fingers and feel from inside your body, feel your fingers. K27 
connecting with that spot. And as you do this, you might feel like a little bit of pulsing energy movement in any one of these points. And that's a good thing. And then the last point we did was the spleen point, which is that point on your rib cage, down at the bottom of your rib cage on either side. Just feel around for a tender spot and hold and feel that spot with your fingers and from the inside of your body your spleen meridian just feel your fingers and two deep breaths and that should have a, a calming effect Brings down your cortisol level, increases your supply of serotonin. Um, similar to that other exercise we did, the triple wormer smoothie, which is another good thing to calm down when you feel like you're stressed. Do that one for me too. So you press in in the center of your forehead, inhale, and as you exhale, you slide your fingers around to your temples. And then inhale again, slide your fingers up behind your ears, down the side of your neck and hang on your shoulders. And inhale and slide your hands down as you exhale to your heart. And once more, press in the center of your forehead, inhale. As you exhale, slide your fingers along your forehead to your temple area. And then inhale. And as you exhale, up over your ears, down your neck, hang on the shoulders. And inhale. And as you exhale, slide down from your shoulders and over your heart. So that's another, um, if you're feeling a little stressed or anything, you can just do that to calm yourself down and you can instantly feel the energy settle. You're actually calming your triple warmer. And uh, for Rick, there's one thing you can do in the morning is just make little figure eights around your eyes. Just do that. Just a figure eight around your eyes. And you don't have to, you can either do it touching your skin or you can do it just in your field. Figure eight, if you've got eye strain from working on the computer, you can do this. And that'll help the energy to unstick around your eyes. Now, um, I'll look up some pressure points and let you know either by email or next week about the sinuses, okay? All right. Great. Thank you so much, Maria. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. You're welcome. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Maria. <laughs> I thought of another thing for, for eyes, Rick, and that is to palm them. And that is bring your, and so you're bringing the chi from your hands into your eyes, but you're also creating total blackness, which then gives your eyes, they've been receiving information over and over again, and that this just allows them to, to balance out. So you do that for a minute or two, and it, uh, it reverses the flow of, uh, of that overstimulation. Great. Uh, Scott. Um, real quick question about uh, the figure eight. Uh, does it does it do one direction, both directions? Either way. Either way. Yeah. Just, you, know. you can do it one way and reverse it. That, that's true. Whatever feels good. Yeah, that's good. Uh, cool. Okay. Thank you, everybody. This has been swell. Uh, see you soon. And uh, don't forget to tip your waiter. 
and uh, <laughs> uh, love you all. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.